Hello, everybody. It's me, Mike Racine, and uh, we're back, baby. We're back after a brief little hiatus. Um, I don't know how many months it was. Was I gone too long? Some might say yes. I don't know. Is anyone still listening to the show? I have no idea, but it's good to be back uh, behind the microphone again. We did an episode with uh, with Amber Frost. Um, and, uh, yeah, we just caught up. I haven't talked to her in a while. She's working on a book. She's living in LA. She's got a dog. We had a nice little conversation about, um, we talked about a lot of things, but we, we definitely talked about, uh, if you, if you should marry teens and, uh, we're both a hard no on that. So good to be back. Thanks for listening. Let's start the show. Okay, so I can start. Welcome, everybody, to um, the sit-down. We're back, and we're recording again, and we have a very special guest. I'm really glad. You know, we've tried to get her on the show since um, the show started, and uh, it, it never happened, and today it's finally happening. Please welcome to the show um, Amber Lee Frost. Howdy. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. I don't here. know how... Mm -hmm. I've never been on. It's just that I seem to always remember you being like, hey, can you be on tomorrow? And mm -hmm. I'm like, I, I never, yeah. I, I, I have to plan everything two weeks in advance like a psychopath. Yeah. And then, you know, originally with the show was a whole thing where we, you know, I wanted to somehow relate it to the mafia so i'm like right. what, what's the th what's the theme and then you know you have anxiety about planning the episode i don't know i must have done something wrong in a past life to end up uh <laughs> podcasting because because i'm sitting here and i just took like three months off which was nice yeah um to have my to have my baby and now we're back and i was like i'm gonna i don't know life is just a lot right now how about you though what are you up to what's uh what's going on you're working on a book uh yeah uh actually just got off the phone with my um, lit agent mm -hmm. it's really weird because like um there's like because of like covid there's like shortages even at like like printing presses uh -huh. and stuff like that still and it's like it's not something i even think about like you know because amazon still comes so i just yeah. figure you know whatever but uh yeah book uh book book gonna be written hopefully it won't be terrible hopefully a few people read it but uh i got now, a dog that's new oh nice mm -hmm. what kind of dog uh, uh purebred american pit bull terrier uh <laughs> nice. getting in touch with my white trash roots and got a pit bull it's just like it's great I, I wasn't looking for what i was i just like did an adoption thing and like they're like, are you okay getting a pit bull? And I'm like, yeah, I like my, you know, my dad had pit bulls, of course. But I was like, you, I know that rescue pit bulls, especially sometimes come with a pass. Mm -hmm. So I said, sure. I'll, uh, I'll take a, a rescue, even a, a, an older one, but he has to be good with other dogs. Mm -hmm. He has to be good with children. He has mm -hmm. to be good with cats. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, my, my my final dearly departed Phyllis. Uh, yeah. Like I, you know, but like maybe I'll get a cat or whatever. And they're like, yeah, okay, we got a dog with all those, and he is. He's good with other dogs. He's great with kids. He even likes cats. The thing that I forgot to mention, and I feel like they took advantage of this omission, is mm -hmm. that adult men are kind of a problem. For him. Okay. Yeah. So I have a sense. I I have a man hating pit bull, um, mm -hmm. but loves little kids, loves other dogs. You know, wouldn't wouldn't hurt the fly. Just you know, lo loves biting guys. Just loves it. Loves to bite guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just that, you know, everyone needs a hobby. It's, it's like anytime he sees a guy man. with neck tattoos, he gets he gets mad. <laughs> he doesn't seem to like. Um, I mean, here too, because I'm in LA. Like yeah. the response to him is so different from. I mean, like the 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 pit bull is the is the dog of the working class. Like regardless, sure. 
of, you know, it's like black people have pit bulls, fucking white trailer trash have pit bulls, like Barrio have pit bulls. Mm-hmm. But like, you know, there are all these like, you know, uh, like Mexicans and Mexican Americans in LA and they're just like, that's a beautiful dog. Yeah, and then like this, the love the white yoga mom will walk by and be like, "Honey, stay away from that dog." Really? It's like a totally different like. I he does look kind of rough too. Like he's, he? he's got like a big scar on his head and he's missing a chunk of his ear. So I kind of uh-huh. get it, but it's like the response is very different from person to person. And is he like is he like beefy? Is he like like muscular and beefy and? Uh... Yeah, he's got yeah. that classic. Like I just like. You know, you say you're adopting. They also sort of like lie on these things where they say, oh, he's a pit bull mix, you know, mm-hmm. to, so that people don't, you know, because that pit bulls, nobody wants to adopt them. Mm-hmm. Even though they're like, the, they're like 70% of like dogs at shelters are a pit bull mix. But it was like, sure. um, he's got that classic, like he has like muscles in his head, you know, oh, like he's great. like, he's like the, the classic, really, sh- really shouldery top front. Thick neck, big jaw, pit bull looking boy. Here, wait, you can look. Mm-hmm. Oh, are we going to see the dog? Yeah. Nice. He's okay. napping. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice collar. <laughs> what's his What's his name? Marlo. After, uh, do you ever see the Long Goodbye with Elliot Gould? Um, no. It's really good. Anyway, it's it's, it's based off of these uh, uh, old detective novels, uh, and Philip Marlowe is the name of, and they're all based in L.A. So he's nice. my little L.A. boy. So I named him basically after Elliot Gould. But it is it was a book originally. It's a great, great fucking movie, though. You got to You got to watch it. There's okay. A, OK. Speaking of fucking like mob scenes in it, uh-huh. there is honestly one of the most like. Shocking mob scenes of like violence in it. Uh, like it's like a it's now a trope. I've seen it in a million movies since, but this came out in like nineteen seventy. I don't I don't know what year, but it, this was the first. This must have been the first time they ever did this thing, mm-hmm. and you just don't see it coming. I mean, it's it's great. It's fucking great. Are you what? Is what's, that like what, a can you tell me what the trope is? Proper? Yeah, it's the um, it's the I, I I mean I you're okay with spoilers, correct? Sure. Sure. Okay. So it's like um, this. Uh, so Ellie Gould's character, Philip Marlowe, is like giving shit to this, um, you know, this this mob boss guy, little short Jewish mob boss guy. Amazing performance. Mm-hmm. And uh, he brings in his, uh, you know, whatever Jews call a gumar. Mm-hmm. And he's like, he's like, look at this. Look at this woman. She's beautiful. She's the most beautiful, and he like it's like fawning over, and he's doing this, and then he takes a like a, she's like asked for a coke, and mm-hmm. and he takes the bottle and finishes it, and then he smashes her in the fucking face with it, and he like mm-hmm. looks over at Elliot Gould, who's like shocked by it, like because it's like it's really unexpected. He's like mm-hmm. with a bottle. That's what I yeah. He's like he breaks a bottle over her face. He's like that's what I do to to someone I love, and you I don't even like. It's a great fucking nice. scene. It's like really brutal. Um, yeah, yeah, anyway, yeah. I was thinking about that the other day because a couple weeks ago I went and I did I um I featured for Louis J. Gomez at uh, Uncle Vinny's Comedy Club in Point Pleasant, New Jersey. And, uh, right. you know, I'm not. Yeah. But thank, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it was it was fun. And it's like I, I wasn't really doing anything else. And like stand up is coming. I, you know, for me, stand up is coming back for me kind of slow. I think also because I had a kid, I, you know, I was I was, um, you know, I took a little time off. So so I'm, I'm right. kind of getting back into it. But, um, you know, it's funny because when you're when you're away from it, you uh, you go like you start to, you know, you, you know, you start to think about it differently. And I remember I'm driving down to the show and I'm like, I'm like, I got to start respecting myself more and I got to start advocating for myself and I got to start not taking shit and I have to start acting like I, I, I belong places and I'm going to start saying no to things when I get offers for, you know, like stuff that's, that's whatever. So hard like, too. Especially when you've had to hustle for so long mm-hmm. that you just get used to saying yes to everything. And then you end up like yes. overbooked for pissing at shit that you shouldn't be doing. And you're like, what is this? I, I have to, I have to go on a, I have to put my kid down to go, do a zoom podcast for somebody <laughs> that I don't know. 
Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, um, so I'm driving down. And I'm like, yeah, I got to start like, you know, being more kind to myself, being better to myself. So the, now I don't expect people to like know who I am, but, but I get there and the host is like, what's your name? And I go, my name's it's Mike Racine. And he goes, okay, I'll be honest. I'm probably not going to remember that. And I'm like, that's, and I'm in my head. I'm like, that's, that's your, <laughs> that's your job as a, if, and I'm like, if I was a, if I was a queer woman of color and you got my name wrong, right. I would write a Twitter thread about it. And uh, you would be. Also, f- that's just so obviously like a flex, like, mm, yeah. like him trying to be like, I probably not gonna, just so you know, I probably won't remember you. And it's like, like, obviously you will. Obviously that's a lie. Like how many names do you have to remember? Also, Mike Racine is not, I mean, it's not so basic that yeah right that it's it's not like you know john smith that you would forget but it's not like a you know a, an eight syllable greek name either it's a very right. easy to remember name yeah no this guy sounds like a dickhead right and i think and he wasn't like trying to be a jerk he didn't come off like but he just like i guess didn't care as much about hosting right? i don't know to me it sounds like he, he was kind of trying to be think a it jerk. Was, you think he was trying to throw shade i mean i Yes, I guess I would have to have heard the tone, mm-hmm. but from the story, my first instinct would be he's yeah. trying to like fuck with you. Yeah. Okay. He just came off like kind of a, like kind of a dope, you know, but then I have a thing where I don't want to be rude to people, especially people who are like, you know, in, in a, who are like, I guess beneath me, so to speak. So I'm like, I'm trying to be nice about it. I'm like, it, there's a town called Racine, Wisconsin, if that helps. Like, I'm being, like, way too nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you know, Wisconsin, like Wisconsin. Uh, and you then know, uh, it's a whole state over there they got. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, it's only, you know, I, and I don't want to be rude. And then he's like, uh, so he does his set. And then he goes, and then he goes to bring me up. And he's like, all right, uh, please welcome your feet. He's like, he's like, are you ready for your headliner, Louis J. Gomez? And everyone's like, yeah, <laughs> no, but uh, no, the crack, there wasn't much of a crack. There was a, there was like a hurricane, but he's like, OK, we get your feature act, this guy. And then he goes, oh, no, <laughs> and he goes, please welcome Mike. And uh, to me, that was worse than like making something up, you know, but um, yeah. Also, write it on your hand, dude. Do something. Like, do like there's. I, yeah. I mean, I'm not trying to undermine the intellectual difficulty of keeping, you know, your act in your head and like right. one other thing, but right. it is kind of part of your job. Also, it's, it's just like not being a cunt to your colleague is part of your job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, the guy felt really bad afterwards, but I was like, this is the scene in the mob movie where I like beat this guy to death because I'm just tired <laughs> of like being, <laughs> being shit on. Yeah, this is your falling down you know. moment where you just like you snap. Yeah. yeah. What a great yeah, movie like, that is. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. It's one of yeah. the great. I mean, it's just like pure, pure resentment mm-hmm. and just just that fucking like tie and like the button up, just like the fucking. I mean, like it's such a fantasy movie, too, because it's like if you aren't frustrated and you watch it, mm-hmm. you're like, dude, calm down. What's your problem? But if you yeah. are having, like, you really need to be <laughs> yeah, in the yeah, right yeah. headspace. And if you're in the right headspace, you're like, yeah, man. Yeah. Fucking, they don't let you have any dignity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. But uh, but it, it, they do do a good job where, like, at the end, he bas- he says, am I, he goes, am I the bad guy? So that was, I thought that was a good way to tell that story, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. I mean, it's like, but, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, you can remember the parts that you want to mm-hmm. <laughs> when you're like, I always think about, you know, when Felix like pointed out that like, he's like, when I was young, I just kind of thought the Sopranos, like the point of it is like, wouldn't it be cool if you had a job where you hung out with all your friends at a club? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you think about all the people who like have like the Scarface poster, like all these kids that like, mm-hmm. you know, what happens at the end of that movie, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. But I think that's kind of like what's great about the show is that you can be you can be that, you know, 17 year old kid or 23 year old kid or 30 year old kid, really, who doesn't know any better. Um, yeah. Yeah. Or you can you can approach it from like you're like, oh, yes, this is Tony's bad. <laughs> You know. It is literally like a, um, yeah, I mean, and also it's kind of, it's kind of not, I think if, if nobody gets your intent, you did a bad job at creating the thing, mm -hmm. you know, if everybody mm -hmm. gets it wrong. Mm -hmm. um, but if everybody understands what you're trying to say, it's probably boring and flat. Sure. You know, it's yeah. probably like a little too didactic or whatever. So it, yeah. it definitely strikes that balance. But to some degree, any art that's good is going to be, there's going to be people misinterpreting it because it's going to be, it's going to be more complicated than like a goofus and gallant com at comic mm -hmm. strip. Felix used the word yeah. didactic with me this week and uh, I had to look it up. That's not like a conspiracy that you guys have, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I think actually we were having a conversation recently where I said uh -huh. something about that it might have been a conversation or maybe i don't know maybe it's a uh -huh. conspiracy against you yeah where it's like you guys are um you guys just we're do just it on gonna purpose invent a word we're gonna invent a word and see if Racine says i don't know what that means yeah you guys all and use like 10th like yeah. grade words <laughs> uh <laughs> no what if we just like made one up and we were like we're like what you haven't heard that yeah and you're like trying to like look it up that could be the whole episode arc yeah and then I find that it's not a word and I, I snap and I go, I go beat that guy to death in Jersey at uncle, at yeah. uncle Vinny's. I wait I outside uncle Vinny's. Yeah. I believe that's what's called gaslighting. We would be gaslighting you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we invented a new game in uh, 2021. It was called gaslight. Gaslight the <laughs> Italian. Um, um, there you guys had a, like a hurricane. We had, there was like a, uh, yeah, there was like a tornado warning like a month ago. Um, and, and, uh, it was like no everyone, got that's the, just all spring in Indiana. Is it? Yeah. Have you, have you ever been in a tornado? Yeah. Right. And then, so, but it's not a big it's deal. Right? It's, it's just like, like weather to us. It's just weather. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's bad. I never had like one go over my house, but like you see them on the horizon, but you, you have time to, I mean, there are sirens and stuff, but like mm -hmm. it smells, suddenly it smells funny and then the okay. sky turns green. What does it smell like? Sulfur? And then, no, it smells like oxygen. I don't, I don't know. It how smells to, kind um, of big anamis, if that makes any sense. <laughs> it smells kind if of that didactic. makes sense to you. <laughs> Um, it smells like a, whippet. <laughs> like whippets. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. You know, like, have you ever done whippets? Like, no, that I haven't done weird, whippets. Uh, or just like what you smell when you, you know, that weird, like release oxygen you smell when you like use the whipped cream thing, it goes, Shh, mm -hmm. and the air that comes out of it is like okay. kind of that it smells like that. Okay. And then, you know, it could be like, it could be like, uh, 82 degrees, but like, sometimes it'll hail like big golf ball sized hail. Mm -hmm. Um, even though it's worn and then you're, and, you know, you see the clouds and everything. I mean, I don't even think most people have basements. It's just that like stuff is so spread out. The odds are that it'll not land on you. But if you're in a trailer, like it doesn't have to land on you to just, it'll just you know, right. people it, shouldn't live in those. <laughs> if it lands on you, it's bad. It's real bad. It's pretty yeah. bad. But yeah. there are all these pictures of people like their houses, you know, three houses in a row. And there's like one in the middle that's just completely destroyed and leveled. And the two on the other side are untouched. Tornadoes mm -hmm. are weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, the one thing that I, 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 I did tell you about this, but I do want to share it on the show. I was driving to St. Louis a couple months ago for a for a move. And, uh, you know, when you're driving on the highway, you drive past like a bunch of trailer parks and stuff. And there's all kinds of flags. Um but I did see I did see a trailer park with an Israeli flag uh, flying above <laughs> it, which I thought was pretty cool. And that would be <laughs> yeah. it would be funny to see an Israeli flag in a tornado, you know, just being blown. Yeah. Around. Yeah. Um, yeah. I do wonder that that's one I've never seen like it in in that context. 
Like, where would, where do they even get it? You know? And like evangelical. I would guess Amazon. Or Evangelical Zionists aren't really. Yeah, that's true. Like they're not like my family are, are that basically, but like we don't actually like Jews. <laughs> it just uh-huh. needs them to be in Israel for the apocalypse, which we think right. is a good thing. Right. Um, so like, it's not like we're like, yeah, go Israel. It's like, well, look, there's this whole country full of annoying people mm-hmm. um, that are very central to our, our doomsday prophecy. Mm-hmm. It's, flags is something that even my family doesn't right we don't only the america flag that's the only only flag they recognize sure well you heard it here first folks amber's family does not like jews (laughs) um no but we do think that they are essential yeah yeah i think my family we definitely have like a respect for them you know they like i think italians look at jews and they're like oh that's that could have been us I don't think we know. Yeah, if we yeah. We studied a little I harder. Think, I don't think we know any. Is the thing mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. it's like we? I always say that like we're very uh, like pro Jew in theory. Uh huh. But if we like you know, if if we went to Katz's, we they if, if like my you know uncle went to Katz's, he would be like, why are they all yelling? Like right. it would be a very different. They don't know what Jews are. Mm-hmm. Like they're like, uh, they still think they're like intense in, in, you know, in, in the desert. Okay. It's, uh, it's basically, I, I have one friend though, who grew up like, like she like literally thought the Jews were like the Hittites. She thought like they were like a tribe that didn't exist anymore. Like she was that really like evangelical cult. Yeah. But I at least had, you know, Mel Brooks movies and shit. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. It is funny. There's a joke that I do on stage about how like, Jews want to tell you they were slaves and like that would be really terrible to have a Jewish slave. Um, <laughs> it's more so, work for uh, you, really. What's that? It's it would more be work for you, really. It'd yeah. be terrible <laughs> for the owner of the slave. Yeah. Um, uh, but uh, there there will be times where I'll do that joke in the Midwest and uh, I don't get much because I don't think they know what I'm talking about. They <laughs> do not. Yeah. That's uh, just there. I mean, there are areas of I mean, like, you know, Hyde Park, Felix is, uh, you know, the Chicago, Uh but it's like, that's basically like, you know, it's the second city. It's a huge urban center. There's a few, there's a few cities in Ohio, maybe, but ultimately Mm. not a, it's a very goyish region. Yeah. Come on in. My dog Walker. That's okay. We're just podcasting. Yeah. Um, I hired a 15 year old in my building to walk my dogs and she's been like the best thing that's ever happened to us. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, I would really like to be able to make use of such a service every once in a while. Yeah. But I can't cause what you, was the bite? <laughs> right. You can't just go looking for teenagers. They have to like come to you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, maybe one will get, you know, uh, be delivered to me, uh, by, by a, a caring and, god yeah. or something i guess you just have to like ask around or something but it's good but she started she started walking my dogs and she's like a great dog walker and then i i also have her sending uh booking emails for me so, so you just have an assistant i have a <laughs> i have a teenage assistant yeah <laughs> which is which is Dream. which is nice it's very good yeah she's working out really good um but but uh there is like a thing with, uh, you know, her brain where it's like not that developed. You know what I mean? Like, like in, yeah, she's, in a a, child. she's a child and it's, it's a weird thing where it's like, oh, you, you can't marry them. That's like, that's crazy. The people ever, cause I, it's been so long <laughs> since I've like been around a teen, <laughs> Yeah, but, but I'm like, no, yeah, it is genuinely weird when you're like, you know, like the average age in like World War One was seventeen mm-hmm. of enlistment, and I'm like, mm-hmm. we just we just had children, but like, yeah, <laughs> like like they're literally when you see a seventeen year old, I remember thinking, yeah. like, oh, that's like an adult. But when you see yeah. a seventeen year old in your thirties, you're like, that is a child. A kid, like yeah. they don't even. How are they allowed to do anything? Like look at them they're they're idiots they're just very large children yeah 
Yeah, I know. And then it's like you look at you look at pretty recent history and it's like Elvis married one. And then yeah, Woody yeah. Allen like made movies about like having relationships with them where they would yeah. like decide what they were going to eat for dinner together. And uh, yeah, Get I don't know. Happy meal. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's, it's extremely weird. And mm-hmm. it's like how. I mean, I guess I did that. Like when I was a, when I was a teen, I dated a, a much older guy. But it's like the nice. thing you do as a girl to be like, "Oh, he's dating me because I'm really mature," and then you're right. like, "Oh no, wait, he's dating me because he's really immature." Right. And it's it's not a. Did he tell I, you I that you were like mature? A, no, he didn't like have to. Like you know, it's just mm. it's just more the this is what I, you know, internalized from the thing. Mm-hmm. He was just in a band. Um, okay. But yeah, I don't think it was like uh, scarring or traumatizing or anything. It's kind of uh-huh. a, it just sort of like a rite of passage, but it is like, if I was the That'd be fun if it was like a polka a band or something. Year old, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> My boyfriend's in he a was, band and he plays the He was clarinet. weird out Yankovic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Weird Al Yankovic groomed me. Um, yeah. But it is like, if I was like the mother of a 17 year old and like a dating like a, you know, 39 year old guy, I'd be like, what the fuck is wrong with mm-hmm. you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be like, what's going on here? But, but it was weird. It, it felt like back in the day, famous people would do that just to like, just because they could, you know? And I mean, non-famous people would do it too. Like yeah. it was like just the middle of the country. I mean, like the age of consent in Indiana is still sixteen. Is it? Like, and it's yeah. And when I think we have Romeo and Juliet laws for like fifteen, so it's like okay. Technically, if you you've got a window, if you're if you're also a teenager, uh-huh. but it's like <laughs> like I mean, yeah. I'm not saying raise it even. I'm just like. Oh God, the fact that we had to make that rule is like a problem. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. I think you could still get married at like 14 in Montana and some of those Western states, like with parental permission. But it's like, look, that's not like you shouldn't. If yeah, you there are a lot of guys on Twitter who seem to know the details of that, like right, like pretty <laughs> readily. Um, yeah. I don't even know what it is in New York. I've never actually never had to look it up. Yeah, I, was, I was talking uh, to Brace uh, Brace Belden, and we wanted to uh, make a um, a game called Pedophile Bingo, mm-hmm. where each square would be like a thing that like a that pedophiles do or say, and one of them would be knows the age of consent in a strange state. Mm-hmm. One of them would be a like state starting out own. any yeah starting yeah. out any uh, sentence. With uh, you know, in France, You're uh, right, right. Yeah, there's a there's a free space that's just like has. Uh, anyway, if we we, I think it would be a good game. Do people bring up France when they when they talk about that? Yeah, because mm-hmm. I think the age of consent is really low, and kids tend to have sex younger. I think is the argument, but I right. think they have sex with each other. With know? each other, I think it's yeah. Yeah. But I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a pedophile. I don't look it up. But Same. the argument, they tend to invoke France a lot, whether this is actually uh-huh. true or just like uh-huh. some some pedo fantasy of France. Mm-hmm. I don't mm-hmm. know. Yeah, but they also draw racist cartoons in France. They do all kinds it's of not dumb a very shit good. in France. Yeah, all kinds of dumb shit. I mean, I'd rather... I'd I, I'd rather I'd take the freight the the racist cartoons for the healthcare that's that would be fine with me but yeah. they're not funny people generally speaking they're not funny people no they're not yeah. I remember even like talking to French people and be like how come you're not funny and they're like I don't know uh-huh. they're like they're like we basically watch like British like TV like uh-huh. they're like we are not good at being funny I think it's yeah. because they're trying very hard to be hot and cool. And okay. You can't be super hot. It's you can be like hot no. and cool and funny, but mm-hmm. you can't be like smoking hot mm-hmm. and like you know ice cool and still be funny. Who who pulls that off? Who's hot and funny? Mm. Well, you could be hot and like lots of like 
there's lots of like hot lady comics that are like hot girls. Yeah. But like, but like they get around it by not being like cool. Yeah. yeah you know? Yeah. yeah. Like you can't be hot, cool and funny. You could be any two of those things, but to be three, you really have to tone down the hot and the cool, but like you have to balance it out. You can't yeah. max out at all three, I think is the thing. Yeah. To me, it's really funny when comics, there's a lot of comics that think they're hot and it's very, it's, that's very funny to me. Cause uh... Uh, I feel like <laughs> for women, they kind of know if they're hot because people tell you or they don't tell you. But are you talking about like male? I think for, no, for women, it's different, but there's got, there's, there's male, there's a few male comics that I know that look like Applebee's managers and they <laughs> like think that they're hot and they're trying to like be hot, which is very, which is very weird that, and very much the opposite of funny to me. Yeah. How yeah. does that, well, it's funny, but not for the people who aren't laughing with you. Um, yeah. What do they do to try and convey hotness? They'll like take like, selfies. <laughs> they like oh, take selfies no. and like they're like, come see my show. I'm I'm headlining. I'm doing a show in New Jersey in in uh, Newark. Come see me perform in Newark, and they'll put like a selfie of their their face and try to look try to look Dave, sexy. Yeah. Which you just want to you just want to shake them and be like, don't do this. This is not yeah. nobody. Nobody's impressed by you. nobody. Nobody should be impressed by a comedian or think they're cool or or you know want to have sex it's with the basis us all. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I just broadly think men shouldn't take sexy selfies, but that's my, um, mm. that's my heteronormativity moving through. I think men should, yeah. um, take selfies or have someone take a picture of them, like moving a fridge or something right. that, you know, is difficult for me to do because that's attractive. I right. know how to like pout in front of, of a phone i yeah. do i'm not able to move the fridge so do uh -huh. show me what you're bringing that i can't do you can't move a fridge i actually did move a fridge recently which is why i brought that up but <laughs> nice but it took a dolly and a couple yeah. times i'm like am i gonna accidentally pull this fridge on myself it's a lot it's a lot i moved the fridge last uh it's Sunday. a 14 cubic foot it was like fucking it's it's a regular size fridge it's, uh -huh. they're very heavy were there any steps no, um, the fridge actually, so the fridge broke okay. and I had to move it because like water was pouring out like the freezer. I still don't have the fucking fridge. They're supposed mm -hmm. to bring it on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Water was like pouring, pouring out of the freezer. and It was just like all over the floor. And so mm -hmm. I'm like, well, I have to get to the water. It's going to, God knows what, warp the floor. I don't know, attract bugs, something. Standing mm -hmm. water under a refrigerator probably seems like a bad idea. Mm -hmm. So I'm like got this dolly and i'm like fucking like i'm like if i die under a fridge and my pitbull eats my face i hope yeah. they know he didn't have any other choice yeah <laughs> don't blame the dog <laughs> no no of course not I, I i hope my dog does eat my i mean it's just nobody's using it if i die he's yeah. got to eat yeah yeah <laughs> Um, no, but that's an interesting th thing that you brought up. I mean, for, for any, for any guys out there who are listening, who are like, how do I appear hot to women? Um, you would say, <laughs> you I would mean, say, I wouldn't yeah. say to women, I would just say that there's, mm. you know, that's the, that's the tough part is cause like, uh, people, even when, even when women are like, <sighs> women don't like that. Men do that. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't know, man, a lot of women like a lot of dumb, you'd be surprised it's almost mm -hmm. like we're individuals and some of us have weird tastes mm -hmm. but for me the pouting into a selfie male is so the example i was using the other day was um like grand romantic gestures yeah um where my argument is only really stupid guys do grand romantic gestures uh -huh. but i really like stupid guys uh -huh. so like i think they're great i don't inspire a ton of them uh -huh. obviously but like when a, and i don't mean like intellectually stupid but like the guys who tend to do grand romantic gestures are have a masculine kind of obliviousness mm -hmm. like they're guys that end up like like they spend a lot of their time not knowing why everyone is mad at them 
Mm-hmm. Like that's the kind of guy that does a grand romantic gesture because they're not that good at communication, mm-hmm. but they're like, look, I'm stupid, but I love you. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, that's that totally. And, and, and it's dumb, but that totally like I'm pro that a lot of girls hate that. And that's mm-hmm. like a whole genre of like YouTube video of guys attempting grand romantic gestures to women that are like not into it. Mm-hmm. So like you just, and I get it. What's an know? example you of know? that? Like, like putting the, putting the name on the uh, jumbotron or like uh... stuff like that. And like, yeah. uh, you know, like public, public proposals and things yeah. like that. That is not my idea but like some people whatever some people want to be proposed to at disney world like women mm-hmm. are fucking weird they like all kinds of weird shit mm-hmm. but like you know try to have like people do things i guess by grand romantic gesture i actually mean guys uh showing up drunk and uh and saying they love me but you know yeah. like it, having a spontaneity to it yeah. But guys who try to like orchestrate things, some women love that. I think it's uh-huh. like if if there are other people involved, I'm yeah. mortified. That's it's kind of a lot, right? Yeah, no, that's not you know, just, just buy flowers or something. <laughs> Did you ever see that video? It's at the, I think it's like 10 years old now, but there's this like Portland, there's this like Portland theater couple, and the guy like puts his uh girlfriend in the backseat of their like uh their like Honda fit. And they drive and they do a musical number and he, and, and like, uh, I think her parents come in and then all their friends come in and they're like, Dan, I'll send it to you. Oh, but yeah, um, yeah that's painful. It shouldn't involve yeah. other people. And to my mind, that's just, yeah, I think that's the thing too, is that even though I like the grand romantic gesture, I do recognize that it's fundamentally lame and embarrassing and I don't uh-huh. want anyone else to see it. <laughs> yeah. Just for me. Yeah, I guess it's got to be it's got to be authentic too. If it feels like it's manufactured or contrived, it's not. Uh... Yeah, if there's if there was practices for it, you know, mm-hmm. if there was stage direction, if you're mm-hmm. like telling your mother-in-law like she's flat, she mm-hmm. needs to you know pick up the tempo. That mm-hmm. that's no longer romantic. There's there's that's a little too planned out. Yeah, right, right, right. When you're like Joan, and get it together. Yeah. Humiliating. Yeah. Because, you know, yeah. he was a tyrant, you know, he was a t- tyrannical uh-huh. director of yeah. her family. <laughs> yeah, they're all yeah. terrified of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, all right, let's get this over with. And then we'll fly back yeah. to Chicago. And then our daughter's it. terrifying gay boyfriend is making us <laughs> well, sing for her. It's really funny in that video because <laughs> he does get down. And he's like, I know that you're and he's like very. Yeah, he's very <laughs> effeminate. But. I don't know. What are you going to do? No relationship's perfect, you know? Of course. Um, so I think why, um, I think it is why people like the romantic gesture sometimes because they're like, ah, we're going to be tried. Mm-hmm. It's like a clear mm-hmm. effort. It's yeah. Like you're making an effort. Yeah. Um, whereas right. having you're... prolonged conversations with someone doesn't necessarily fix anything. Yeah, your straight husband's not going to dress the dog up like Alexander Hamilton and do a dance number, <laughs> a dance number for you. No, no. Yeah. And if he does, I'm like, oh, fuck. I yeah. can swear you were heterosexual. Right. You that seem to like seem... pussy so much. <laughs> that doesn't seem like the worst thing in the world, being married to a, a, a woman being married to a gay guy or or me being married to a, a lesbian, you know? I doesn't... had a friend yeah you could you could go and she could go into the moving business with you um the lesbian yeah yeah i had a mom actually uh had a friend who married a gay guy and like he was like gay Mm -hmm. like i I still don't understand it to this day i mean like we're getting married and Mm -hmm. at one point my mom was like is he Get, didn't you meet like literally in ballroom dancing classes? They did literally. Mm-hmm. They were competitive ballroom dancing couple. Mm-hmm. And she's like, yeah, but like he's like changed his mind. He's like into pussy now. And I'm like, I feel like I mean anything's possible, but yeah, uh, they still go ballroom dancing. Like it's still this guy is still more feminine than me. Yeah, like it just. I don't know how it works. Maybe 
maybe they don't have sex. Maybe she's mm-hmm. not into sex very much. Or like, I don't know. I don't. It's mm-hmm. it's rude to ask. And right. Normally, I don't care. But right. this is just such a situation that I've never heard of that I'm just very curious. Yeah, if they seem happy, it's like, who are you to judge? You know. Yeah, they do too. And I'm oh, like, are they still together? What is it? About? Yeah. yeah. I'm like, what is it about your relationship that you like? that apparently doesn't include one of the things that I find to be essential in a relationship. Yeah. Uh, maybe that's just not part of it for them. Yeah, maybe. Who knows? Maybe, I don't know. Oh, yeah. Maybe he secretly loves pussy. I don't. Maybe. I, anyway, it keeps me up at night. Right. There's, but there's sometimes you meet like a guy who's, cause there's somebody that I know in, in, in my life who seems like he's pretty he's pretty gay but he's so in the closet that like you're like well maybe you maybe you do you know if 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 you're if this is if this has been going on for so long and everyone you've met thinks that you're gay then maybe mm-hmm. i'll just give it to you maybe you're like an honorary <laughs> straight guy if yeah, you've, uh, yeah you know if you've kept that going anyway well, I've definitely also known a few guys that have the most gay affect in the world, mm-hmm. but are just like from California. Mm-hmm. Like they, they just have vocal fry culturally and they're kind of a fat mm-hmm. and well groomed. And it's like, mm-hmm. it, 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 I used to have, like in Indiana, I had the best gaydar in, I'd be like, that guy is, she's saying that. Mm-hmm. That guy, the best gay like, are in all of Indiana. <laughs> like, that that could be a... gay, and they're like, yeah. he's a trucker, and I'm like, he's a gay trucker. Then, and I was uh-huh. always right, but then yeah, I yeah. moved to New York, and it was too, the instrument was too sensitive, so I just thought everyone was gay. Uh huh. Like, Not I me just... though, right? Not me. No, you you pinged as heterosexual for me. Thanks, but you know what I mean. You, you heard, heard it here first, and... folks. <laughs> uh. Yeah, but it, yeah. it was like, I, I I didn't realize, I had two times where I didn't realize I was on a date with someone. Mm-hmm. I thought it was gay. Oh, <laughs> okay. In like New York. Getting, yeah, yeah. That's not a thing that happens in Indiana. Mm-hmm. That could be like a fun, like, USA drama, like Monk, where it's like, you have the best gay at in Indiana. Yeah, or like uh, one of those psychic murder catching <laughs> shows where I have to, yeah. I have to use my gaydar to solve the to solve the crime. Uh huh. Yeah, they use you to solve like a criminal procedural. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, but you're like a 15 year old girl, so they have to take you out of school to, you know. Yeah. To solve yeah. the crimes. <laughs> Just like um, a mean 15 year old girl, and like <laughs> you know, they're like, "Aren't you like missing a lot of school?" And I'm like. Uh, yeah, but Mr. Anderson doesn't want his wife to know, so I can leave whenever I want. He's like, oh, no, it's Amber. The, girl with the, <laughs> the town mayor, like, hates you because you're always antagonizing him. <laughs> yeah, because like, even the, the fact that everyone knows that I know mm-hmm. means that I could just lie and people would believe me, too. Right. So I could, right. you know, it's so much power. Yeah, but you want to use your powers for good, I guess, and not, not evil. Not 15-year-old girls. <laughs> yeah no right 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 all 15 year old girls are evil and the only cure for it is womanhood mm-hmm. which some adult female people never really reach and they just stay girls mm-hmm. who are like evil chaos demons mm-hmm. but right. it's like I mean, I remember what I was like, and I'm like, God, I was like a little cunt. And then I'm like, I wonder what happened. And I was like, oh, I just like became an adult female instead of an adolescent female. Okay. Nice. I don't, yeah, I don't know many teenage girls except for the one that works for yeah. me. Yeah. I think that's, I think I'll keep. I, you're I, not in her line of, um, you're not going to be in her crosshairs. In her, in her line of, right, right, right. Right. Yeah. That's, she's going to save that for her mom, her friends. Um, whatever boy she finds, uh, she either has a crush on or uh-huh. has a crush on her and she's not into, you know, whatever it is, Sure, someone to be ruthless to, but you're not in that you're, you're peripheral to, to her chaos energy. Yeah. Cause I talk about this on stage too. I had it when I was in eighth grade, I had a bully who was a girl her, and her name was Megan and she would come into class and like make fun of my clothes and call yeah, me fat. Yeah. yeah. She might've had a crush on you. 
Yeah, you think? Uh, I, don't... I don't know. I was. I never bullied guys I thought were cute. I uh-huh. bullied guys. Like I bullied retarded. I kids. thought were full of themselves. <laughs> I, I, bullied, <laughs> I bullied handicapped kids. That was like my thing. Yeah. Just low hanging fruit. Yeah. Um. I. Uh, yeah, I do remember there was a guy I was, um, like I saw very briefly, uh, and he was a he was a Jewish fella, mm-hmm. um, as as is, as my history goes. He flew an Israeli flag on his trailer park <laughs> on his trailer, but he said, "You remind me of this girl from my summer camp," and I'm like, "So you didn't go to Jewish summer camp?" He's like, "Oh no, it was a Jewish summer camp, but it was huh. like." Uh, New Bedford, Massachusetts, and just one of the counselors was just this like this this shiksa that just smoked Pall Mall uh-huh. and was just like mean to me. And uh-huh. he's like, and I was like a little bit younger than her, and he's like, I kind of want to kill slash I don't know what because he's like thirteen, mm-hmm. so he's like horny. But you're like, I don't know what I would do if I got a hold of that. You know that hero being horny. Mm-hmm. And he's like, and I really, really hated her, but I just furiously also was sexually attracted to her. And that's I'm like, fun. that's the sweetest compliment anyone has ever given me. I'm going to thank you for a week. <laughs> nice. It was actually uh, very cute. Yeah. It was like, you remind me of a girl, of a, of a, a shit to the bully me in summer camp, but apparently would just smoke palm oils while cleaning out the pool, like skimming the swimming pool. <laughs> Huh? Like, yeah, that that's cool. My energy. <laughs> that is cool. Yeah, that's when you get all your best directions too. When you're like uh, thir- between thirteen and fifteen, which is kind of unfair. Um, I mean, nowadays they're best for you, but I think an adult, you're right? Uh, with a with what I am told is the is the youth voter. It mm-hmm. actually be very irritating and fleeting, you know. Okay. Because I remember right. guys did not laugh. They did not right. have longevity. They made up for it with the, mm-hmm. you know, okay. the repetition. It's okay. definitely quantity, not quality. So I'm just romanticizing the past. I think you're romanticizing the past. Yeah. yeah. You're saying my wife a likes it. Right, 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 right. And my wife likes it when she has to work for ten minutes to get it, like she, like she's blowing <laughs> up a bike tire. Yeah, it makes you feel accomplished. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're like, I did that. I didn't give up. I just <laughs> stuck with it. And look what we have. <laughs> Half an erection. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess we're going to wrap up in a little bit, but uh, I don't know. I yeah, guess... on that note. <laughs> <laughs> how, how is, uh, you know, I was surprised when you decided to, to move to LA. I mean, a lot of people were moving the city and I, I guess I was surprised that you went there because it doesn't seem like, uh, it doesn't, I mean, I'm, I guess like anywhere you move somewhere and you you find the stuff that you like about it, but I don't know. Are you, are you having fun? Are you enjoying it? Have you, have you lived there before? No. Yeah. I mean, like, I love it, but I never lived before. And when I was visit, I was like, why didn't anyone live here? And then mm-hmm. I realized, uh, I visited some friends and I'm like, oh, you can't really visit LA. Uh-huh. Like it is a place where right. people like live live i mean it's just like yeah. all the cool stuff is like not immediately obvious it's like all the parks and nature and shit okay i mean i thought about moving here beforehand um just for like work stuff moving to france and no moving here beforehand oh, okay like sorry. before before the lockdown sorry and then and then the lockdown happened uh-huh. and i was like okay this is the I'm yeah. not a I'm not a California girl enough to believe in signs, but I'm like clearly this is the end of the era for me. Uh-huh. I had a great time with New York. Uh, uh-huh. It was quite it was it was very good to me. I beat it. I won. Now it's time to go somewhere else. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know if I'll be here forever, but it's like you know, there's it's just some place to go. I could be outside all the time. That's the best part of LA is that I can go. Mm-hmm. On a three-day trip to, you know, Idlewild or the desert or, you know, mm-hmm. Malibu. Just being, I realized, like, I actually did grow up in nature. It's 
Mm-hmm. Also, a uh, thing I like. I like having access to it. You can have that in New York. Yeah, it is nice, and you don't get a lot of it in the city because I I started uh, going to parks a lot during lockdown. I would like find different parks on the map and travel to different parks, and uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know. I'm the first person to ever say this, but trees and uh, and ponds and uh, the outdoors are very nice. No they one's are. ever had that thought before. Yeah, you're so unique. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's good. So it's treating you well. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I like uh, yeah, we're here. Lost a bunch of weight, got in shape, got a got the dog. So nice. Go camp, like you just go on trips a lot. It's really nice. What uh, what what brought you to? Yeah, what what brought you to New York originally? Um, I got a job basically, like that. I I so I I thought BSA was about to be hiring like a secretary mm-hmm. but I knew that like I didn't live there yet and there were no jobs in Indiana at the time so I got a job with working family mm-hmm. and I was like like I'm just gonna canvas for a while I'm like if I'm gonna be broke I'm gonna be broke at least sometimes some things are happening mm-hmm. um I, I really didn't have a very good reason except that like because the job I got there I never it wasn't like a dream job it's not usually the kind of job people move it, it was like a canvassing job. I was mm-hmm. like, yeah, I could do this. But I wanted mm-hmm. to be in a bigger place. And and there was just not shit. I didn't mean, like it. I was getting like bartending gigs and office cleaning gigs. But it was like mm-hmm. really erratic in Indiana. And there's just nothing. Yeah. There's just nothing. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I just I moved with my ex-husband. Mm-hmm. Um, and then year in, I'm like, all right, like to say, don't think I like the husband anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, I started, you know, I, we were in a band together, and, and then I've been writing about music at that time, and then I started getting work writing about music, and then I started writing about politics. And then, yes, USA was hiring. Yes, mm-hmm. I was the third employee in the office or whatever. And mm-hmm. I don't know, it all, it all just kind of worked out. Nice. Yeah. Um, so, so you have a lot of experience knocking on doors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I did that. I did that before, too, in Indiana. So, like, if you could do that in Republican-ass Indiana. Uh-huh. It's pretty easy in New York. And it was for, like, it was for, like, political, political stuff. Mm-hmm. Because I did that, but I was selling uh, window and siding estimates. So we're kind of, you know, we're, like, similar in that way. Very similar. Where, you know, I mean, similar. in many ways, a uh, uh, a left wing Democrat is kind of a living in sighting. Like, not exactly what you want, but mm-hmm. you gotta you gotta cover the house somehow. Did you really yeah. do door to door sales? Yeah, and I was making a lot of money, and my family was really proud of me. And I would, I was making good money, and I would buy like uh, colorful shirts with it. I would buy like Lacoste polos and uh, and nice clothes. And uh, they were really happy, even though we were sending salespeople to like rip, like rip people off. Um, yeah, yeah. But I think it was a good experience, and I'm glad that I did it. Yeah, I think everyone should have to do sales at some point, even if you suck at it, mm-hmm. to be like. And that's basically what canvassing is with sales. I mean, like, is sometimes it? it's like in at working families, like you were just soliciting donations, like mm-hmm. most of the time. It was mm-hmm. like. Which is absurd. It's like, hey, can I have hundred twenty dollars for a month? Some people would do it. Some people were so good at it. Yeah. But I was just like, I I was good at getting people to vote. I was not good at asking people for money. I think it's because I could never convince myself that that money was going to be used for anything uh-huh. uh, useful. Oh, um, right. But no, everyone should have to do it. To just be like, oh, this is what it's like to just have to like want something from a stranger. Yeah, it's like scary at first, and then it's and then you get used to it, and it's fine. Yeah, I I never got comfortable with it with soliciting donations, but uh, mm-hmm. except for like the birdie door knocking, because then I'm like, what? Mm-hmm. You got you got thirty bucks, and, mm-hmm. and like that, because I was like, yeah, no, I do know they're not wasting this money. Yeah, and that um, is effective though, right? It's an effective yeah, way yeah. to reach people. Yeah, I mean, face to face is is always the best. I mean, you can have like mm-hmm. 
it's also fun to just like have a conversation with a stranger. Like, mm -hmm. even if it's bad, it's like whatever, it's just story. Yeah. Yeah, meeting people. I like and, it. And uh, I wish I had uh, anything I cared enough about to care this for right now, but <laughs> kind of nice yeah, not having right. to. Right. Well, maybe someday. Yeah. Um. Cool. Well, listen, any, uh, I'm going to let you go, but any, uh, any final thoughts, anything you wanted to talk about that we didn't, that we didn't hit. It was nice to sit here and catch up and, uh, have you on as the first, like I said, I took some time off, uh, from the show. I took like three months off and it's nice when you're a small business owner, you can do that. Yeah. You know? You're like, fuck you. It's paternity leave. Yeah. No, I just have, have fatherhood. He's so cute. Yeah. It's good. He's very, yeah, he's very cute. He's, uh, he smiles a lot. He's very good. I feel weird because everybody is like, I thought that I was never going to sleep and he, he sleeps a good amount and I'm sleeping like yeah. eight or nine hours a night. So I don't know why, I don't know why that's happening. And they say that you shouldn't say that out loud, but, uh, no, I'm I think you know. everyone like over states there. I do remember an essay someone wrote where they were like, I don't know, I kind of like Kid, like it's, she's like on her third kid she's like I kind of like baby I, yeah. I like that period she's like you know and it's just me and my husband but I mm -hmm. like the first one it was like her mom helped or something and she's like I like I don't know what to say say goodbye to your life mm -hmm. you're yeah, never yeah. gonna like have right. fun or sleep again you're right. about to get ugly and unfuckable and unfun right, right, right. and all your friends will hate you like, right. I don't know I just like take the fucking and maybe yeah. it's just because my family didn't have the same kind of like formalized attitude towards parenting, mm -hmm. which I think is healthier. They would just be like, okay, we're going over to your Aunt Carrie's. Uh, mm -hmm. Mom's going to have a few beers. Mm -hmm. And then Uncle Lance is going to drive her home. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, you know, like what is some people are like chain smoking and drinking and just like run uh -huh. around in the yard, don't go in the street. Like, yeah. It, obviously, like babies are more labor intensive than that, but I think people like they try to sort of professionalize him. Like they drive themselves crazy. They don't help. For sure. Yeah, I don't know. He just fits into life very well. I mean, every once in a while, he'll like you know take a dump and it gets on his clothes, but you just like clean yeah. it and then okay. you know, and you like give him a bath and uh, and that's hose it. I don't know. Off. I feel like what's that? Yeah, just hose him off. You just hose him off. Yeah, and. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's just we got a very good baby. I mean, I mean, now he's getting a little too big for the bathtub, so I have to like hold him in the shower, and that's oh, that's yeah. fun. And it's like you just watch him like he's a dog, but uh, <laughs> it, but he gets very slippery. So I guess the <laughs> hardest part about it is like, yeah, you worry about him getting hurt and like dying all the time. Um, you worry yeah, about him. That does seem to be a common thing where people start thinking about death and their mm -hmm. death and your child's mm -hmm. death and injury and like you're separating mm -hmm. them that. But mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and I they're mean, just whatever. like some so babies are, are quality and stuff, and they're so so more difficult than others. But it's like, feel. yeah, I feel like people try to sell, but like your your life is over. You're gonna hate this little thing. I was like, uh huh. Do you calm it? Maybe that's a you thing. <laughs> right. Yeah. I think it, I think it is. It doesn't really, I don't know. I don't want to invalidate anybody who says that, but it doesn't, I don't feel that way. I don't feel that way yet. Maybe when he gets older, when he's like, uh, I mean, joining ISIS. Now, though, where he's, yeah, when he's joining ISIS. It's to the point now where it's like, uh, you know, to sleep through the night, it's like, mm -hmm. when he starts surprised. running around, there'll probably be a, a spike in stress, but. Yeah. I am surprised that I, that I sleep a lot. Um, and then when he came out, I was worried that he didn't look like me because he has like, he has light hair and he's got blue eyes, but our smiles are similar. Um, I think he looks like you, but I mean, he yeah. doesn't look like you in that he is a baby. So. Right. <laughs> All right. Thank you. I look nothing like my mom. I'll I will. Uh, uh -huh. At one point she was like, I did kind of wonder if maybe you were switched. And then I'm oh, like, yeah. did you did you want to get like a test? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And she was like, no. She's like, because by then you were like four years old and it wouldn't mm -hmm. matter. You're like my right. Uh, but we did end up having to uh, yeah uh, do some some 
genealogy thing that my grandpa made the whole family do. And we are too. I know. She's your mom. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, that would be funny though if she you did find out that she was switched and she met her like real kid and she just got along with her really well, like better with you. Yeah, yeah. You know? I mean, it would be difficult for her to find a, someone who she got along better. Mm-hmm. I think it's like also like the two person family thing, the single mom. Yeah. That it's just there's no escaping the degree of intimacy, which means you want to kill each other more often, but also you kind of have telepathy. Right. <laughs> Right. What happens if the baby's not your kid? Does it like, uh, if you find out when the baby's not yours, when he's like one, do you still get to hang out with it? Because by that point, you've. I don't know. I think there's been like um, specials on people who've had to navigate this because it's actually mm-hmm. kind of common that they Is switch it? babies up. Yeah. Or more babies? common than you think. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, they, a lot of them, you know, fresh, fresh out the oven, kind of don't they all kind of look like old boxing gloves you know that they're they are it is a little difficult uh-huh. to get the distinguishing features uh-huh. but i guess this mix up to her kind of frequently so there's been like a few of these but i was like yeah my mom was just like i don't know i was like it's just, maybe you would just be like my kid that didn't like i probably want to meet the other one but she wouldn't mm-hmm. be my kid because mm-hmm. like it's like it's really not about biology at some point but yeah, I don't sure. know. People want to know. I'm sure they're curious, you know. Yeah, and then also like when the kid, when the when you when the kid comes out, it's like it doesn't even know who you are or what is happening. Yeah. So it's not like there's this insane connection with a newborn baby right away. It's just a little blob that kind of that like it doesn't even smile until it's like a you know a month old. Um, yeah, and I think and now that. Really- or hear the waves like we do yet like everything is like a black and white blur and like Mm -hmm. everything sounds all muffled for a while and then like slowly Mm -hmm. like their hearing and their eyesight comes into focus but it's like really it's just a world of blobs themselves yeah yeah it's very gradual there's a lot of bullshit out there about like you know like oh you have this baby and you're it changes your life i did not feel like a newborn baby changed my life yeah it's you more know? that the baby is now there's a new person. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, cool. Well, um, thanks so much Good for job being on here. The baby, was... man. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I did it. Yeah, I guess he yeah, I made a good kid. Yeah, he's gorgeous. Yeah. And you know, you can't fuck up too bad because you gotta get that she'll... <laughs> right. She'll make sure you don't drop them in the shower. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, no, and I, she is, a, she is a very good mom and I think if there's a good, you know, the bar's not that high for dads, so it's That's fine. True, yeah. You change one diaper you're, you're uh, out of the air. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, cool. Well, listen, do you want to, you don't want to plug anything, do you? Uh, no. All right. Um, all right. Well, thanks for being here. That's, uh, that's the episode that was, uh, that was Amber Frost. And uh, if you guys can support the show on Patreon, we do a show every day. That's uh, 20 minutes and uh, follow the show. Sit down pod at uh, on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter at Mike Racine uh, Racine Mike on Instagram. Um, I'm making TikToks uh, now and it's you know, it's not that it's not that bad. It's not that embarrassing. Um, so follow me on there. And uh, thanks for joining us. And uh, I'll see you around.